Michael Burgess. Congressman, thanks for joining us on a Saturday. You saw those live pictures out of Tijuana just now along with all of us. Those people don't look like a national security threat to me. Those people look like people who have traveled a long way. They are tired. They're probably hungry and they're scared. Well, first off, uh, Jillian, thanks for having me on this afternoon. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I will tell you, after several years of, of uh, traveling to at least the Texas border uh, and going into the shelters that we provide for unaccompanied minors coming to this country, having traveled to Central America myself, I get it that there are people who do leave for, for economic reasons, but the statement that was made in the, the lead-in to this, the 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 rhetoric that is used in the United States Congress, the rhetoric that in the previous administration came out of the White House was one that implied that if you could get here, you would get a permiso, you would get a slip of paper that told you you could come in the country and stay. And that is really what has been so injurious. Think of the, the difficulty that those people encountered on their trek up here. Uh, but in fact, it's a saleable commodity from coyotes and human traffickers in those countries to sell people a, a ticket or a charge that they can come to the United States. And uh, it's expensive. It is an expensive, dangerous journey for them. So I think it's important to get the word back that it is no longer business as was usual. Uh, you are going to have to comply with our asylum laws. And the fact of the matter is, it's not a free ticket in. Look, uh, complying with asylum laws is, is one thing. That's, you know, a priority for the administration. But critics of the president will say, why create an environment that's inhospitable to refugees and asylum seekers? You, you, this, is, this is a strong point for America. It's always been thus. Why do we have to change that? Well, I don't think, I don't think that is the choice at all. Uh, actually, the, the difficulty will be on the, on the southern side of the United States border in, in Mexico. But the, look, the United States of America takes in more people legally every year than every other country on the face of the earth combined. And it has been that way for several years. I don't have the figures for 2017, the first year of the full year of the Trump administration, but I believe that number will be even a little bit higher. So it's not that we're not welcoming to immigrants, but the other side of this is in 2012, when President Obama unilaterally said, I'm gonna change my executive order, the, uh, the immigration laws of this country, the word went back that, hey, if you can get up there and get one of these notice to appear, uh, again, called a permiso, then you're going to be in the country and you've got nothing to worry about. And look at the dollars when, when unaccompanied minors come into this country, uh, they become then the charge of the Department of Health and Human Services. All right, Department well, Congressman, if, if the administration is planning to welcome people at lawful points of entry, why has the president sent thousands of troops to the southern border? Why are they spread out along all entry points of the border for hundreds of miles? Be because of the onslaught of people that were just being unloaded on this country and unloaded on our social welfare systems, children that are going to have to be placed in schools, children whose vaccination status is not known. And this has been going on for several years. So you're uh, happened, comfortable with the, the idea that, as critics of the president say, he has now militarized the southern border. This is fine to you. Well, it's, of course, it's not the first time in U.S. history that's happened. But look, here's, here's what I think is more important. The governments of those countries, Honduras, uh, El Salvador, Guatemala, the governments of those countries, no one forced those people to run for president of those countries, but they have the obligation to take care of their people. And we are spending a ton of United States tax dollars on taking care of their children who arrive in this country. I think we should deduct that figure from foreign aid that goes back to those countries, make it about their money, and that will make it important to those leaders. They need to be stepping up and doing a better job, not encouraging these caravans to, to leave. All right, Congressman, thanks for joining us today. Thanks okay, for thank infusing you. this conversation with uh, some reasonable, level-headed uh, talk. We appreciate it. We'll have you back soon. Thank you. Leland. All right, President Trump in California getting off Air Force One. You can see there a few minutes ago he is 